Hi, I'm Mel Nan Phillips, co-creator of the Dramatica Theory of Story. Today I'd like to talk to you about a story point called Audience Reach. There's some story points that deal directly with structure and others that pertain to the collective impact of a number of story points. Audience Reach is one of these combined dramatics. It's also called an audience story point because it's concerned with the kind of reach that the story has into the audience. Specifically, it describes whether your readers or audience will empathize or sympathize with your main character. Now, empathy is when your readers or audience identify with your main character. Sympathy is when they care about the main character but feel as if they're standing right behind them rather than in its shoes. When audience members empathize, they suspend their disbelief and emotionally occupy the main character's position in the story. When audience members sympathize, it seems to them as if the emotional maelstrom of the story revolves around the main character, making him or her the central character of the story, but they aren't that person. Audience reach is determined by the effects of two story points, story limit and main character mental sex. Now there's a term that brings up controversy. Limit describes the story dynamics that force the story to a conclusion, what brings the story to an end. And mental sex describes whether your main character thinks like a man or a woman. And that brings in even more controversy. Well, let me explain. Story limit has two variations, what brings the story to a conclusion, time lock and option lock. Time lock stories are like the motion picture 48 Hours with Eddie Murphy and Nick Nolte, in which a police detective has exactly two days before he has to return to jail a convict, who's the key to solving another crime. When the time is up, the story reaches its conclusion. Time lock. Option lock stories are similar to Disney's Beauty and the Beast, in which a transformed prince must make somebody love him before the last petal falls from an enchanted rose, or he'll remain a beast forever. When the last petal falls, the conclusion's reached. You run out of options. Just like if you have three wishes, when you use the last one, options are up. So time lock and option lock are the two different kinds of limits, and that's half of what determines audience reach. But then there's that controversial one, main character mental sex, which also has two variations, not unexpectedly male and female. Mental sex doesn't refer to the physical gender of the main character, but only to its mental gender. Because none of us truly know how the opposite sex thinks, how can we? Authors often can't help but write all their characters as thinking in their own sex, regardless of the character's physical gender. At best, they write characters that look like their opinion of how the other sex would react, and anybody who sees the movie of their own gender probably agrees. Examples of this can be seen in the original motion picture Aliens, in which the main character, Ripley, was actually written for a man and changed only uh, the character dialogue when the role was cast with Sigourney Weaver. Alternately, in the movie The Hunt for Red October, Jack Ryan is a female sex main character as he uh, solves problems intuitively and emotionally rather than by observation and logic. Now, it doesn't mean that women can't use logic and men can't be intuitive, but it means that there are actually four levels of the mind. Only one of them is determined by mental sex, the one below all the others, the one that's primal. Above that, we have our consciousness, where we can decide to be holistic, or we can decide to be linear, or logical, or emotional. And beneath that, we have our memory, where our training is, that teaches us to be one way or another. And below that, we have our subconscious level, where the sum total of all that we've experienced, without us even knowing where that came from, will lead us to be drawn to be more logical, or drawn to be more intuitive. Those are the levels we can control, or at least that are not determined before birth. But that lower level, that very bottom level, pre-conscious, that's cast in the biology of the brain, and it determines a bias to thinking towards the logistic and hierarchical, or thinking towards the intuitive and relativistic more easily. We all have the capacity to make that choice or be de determined to have that choice at three levels. Only at the bottom is it predicted for us by our birth, our mental sex, our mental gender. And even there, we have both of them, but we just have a leaning towards one or the other. It's a way of breaking a mental deadlock. If you're stuck and can't resolve it, your biology takes over and says, go with the logical or go with the emotional, and that's what breaks the logjam. All right, so as one might expect, male and female readers or audience members empathize or sympathize with the main character for different reasons. For men, 
They'll empathize with a main mental uh, with a male mental. <laughs> Let me try that again. Get those dentures fixed. For men, they will empathize with a male mental sex main character, and sympathize with a female mental sex main character. In other words, to a man, it doesn't matter about the other half of it, uh, whether you're dealing with uh, time lock or option lock. Men will empathize with male mental sex characters and they will sympathize with female mental sex characters. If the mindset matches their own, they'll empathize. If it's the other gender, they'll just sympathize, regardless of what limit is, is invoked, time lock or option lock. And conversely, women do something a little different. They'll empathize in an option lock story, but only sympathize in a time lock story, regardless of what mental sex the main character possesses. So to women, it doesn't matter if you're a man or a woman or think like one, you know, like Jack Ryan again, or, or Sigourney Weaver's character, or Ripley in, in Aliens, that cross the gender line. It doesn't really matter to a woman. What really matters is whether the story is being closed down by running out of options or closed down by running out of time. Well, why the difference? Well, there's reasons in the physiology of the brain, but it's too deep to go into right here. If you're interested, you can find a complete description of what causes these mental differences between men and women later in the program in a lesson devoted specifically to mental sex. Okay. Still, for a quick visual, imagine a plain old clock face. Imagine that men's minds sit at noon and women's minds sit at nine o'clock. Okay or that way from you, looking at the camera, okay? Women see men as only being a quarter of an hour away, but men see women as being three quarters of an hour away because they move around the clock face in a different direction, and that's basically the kind of impact that happens, and that's what happens in the dramatica structure. Here's the dramatica structure again, the 3D expanded view of it, and we turn around in them, things rotate and spin as you twist this up to create dramatic potential. The direction of the spin in places is controlled by whether or not the main character of the story has a male or female mental sex. That's going to determine which way things turn around that clock face. All right. Men and women, um, often when they're conversing, they see themselves as speaking apples and oranges. Uh, they're not really in conflict. They're just looking at things from a different direction, using different standards to evaluate. So it's not surprising that men's empathies might be drawn to those who think like them, Okay. Well, women, seeing men just a quarter of an hour away, would be more affected by the situation the main character finds himself, whether or not it's a time lock or an option lock. For women, an option lock is more like the way they think, trying to balance all the different options, relationships, uh, uh, very analog, this weighing against that. Whereas for men, they're looking at somebody who thinks logically, can get to the right heart of the matter, identify the problem, identify the goal or solution, and then make the quickest, most efficient method to arrive at the solution uh, with a plan of action that's been determined. Okay, so with this information, if you want to create a story in which both men and women will empathize with the main character, then you'll want to limit your story with an option lock so women will empathize, but employ a male mental sex main character so men will, and both will empathize. On the other hand, if you want to explore a despicable main character, you may not want to disturb your readers or audience by making them empathize with such a cad. In such a case, you can ensure that your readers or audience will only sympathize by writing a female mental sex main character, so men will sympathize, in a time lock story, so women will sympathize. The danger is that since nobody empathizes, nobody really gets into the story themselves, and it doesn't sell very well. well Naturally, the other two combinations can also exist with men empathizing, male mental sex, and women sympathizing, time lock, or women empathizing, option lock, and men sympathizing, female mental sex. You can predict whether a book or movie will attract more men or women, women, men or women, just by seeing who empathizes. Now, Hollywood tends to favor mental mental sex, male mental sex, option lock stories most often because this has the entire audience empathizing and therefore, since far more mixed mental sex couples go to movies than single individuals of the same mental sex, it ensures that the largest percentage of the audience is personally involved with the movie and thereby increases the box office, all artistic merit aside, and also increases the possibilities of merchandising. Well, there's videos on that on our website at storymind.com. Just go S-T-O-R-Y-M-I-N-D.com, and you can get all kinds of information on this absolutely free. That's it for now. See you next time.